Hi, good afternoon. My name is Daryl. Time for business. Now, the Minister of Tourism, Barbara Tinjesi, has told Joy Business that her outfit will be considering an increment in the tourism levy paid by tour operators. According to her, the current rate of 1% paid by the operators is not enough to develop tourist size, though the minister is hoping for private partnership to support government's plans for the sector. She believes an upward adjustment in the levy is crucial at this time. Um, the tourism sector is um, public sector led, but it's private sector driven. So we are also looking at how we can get private sector on board for some of the projects that we need to do so that we get we put in place public-private partnership to ensure that um, we can diversify our, our tourism industry. So we don't want so much to bedding the industry by um, increasing the levy. We are looking at it. Maybe a little um, increment will come, but we also have to look at the private sector to come on board to support the industry. Uh, mobilization, are the people paying, those who are not paying, any sanction for them? There are many hotels, some are not paying. That is the issue that I raised, the mobilization. We have not been able to ensure that all the establishments are paying. So we are, we, we are strengthening um, our, our, our mobilization to ensure that we bring everybody um, with the, within. But aside from that, we are also looking at um, the possibility of um, a little increment in the rates and then also the public-private partnership. Now, the chief executive of uh, Stambik Bank, Ghana, Al Hassan Andani, has said there is enough funding for small and medium scale enterprises. However, the funds are not efficiently managed. Mr. Andani is calling for best practices to be followed through to ensure SMEs benefit from existing funding opportunities. The manner of intervention is being fraught with some gaps. You know, when you say an equity fund, the disciplines around managing that equity fund, selecting the beneficiaries and, you know, following their progress and ensuring there's a clear exit plan. At what point do you exit these entities, you know, with that supported fund? Those disciplines have been lacking. Whether you go back as, you know, far back as the middle 80s where we had all sorts of World Bank, FOSMED, name them. All sorts of funds have come true. The central bank, government itself, all the governments have set up various kind of funds to assist SMEs. But the manner of administrating these funds have been, you know, you know, found wanting. So the idea is that, for me, the, 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 the quantum of funds available has been there, but just the vehicles that we create with the right disciplines to manage it, which has been lacking. Is there best so we do hope. somewhere that we're hoping that we could just copy? Oh, yes, there's best practice. There's best practice. I mean, if you go back to even Japan after the Second World War, how did they create all the global companies that we see today? They created them through state equity funds and state Process, I mean, state uh, uh, processes of monitoring the progress and, and how they help them to grow. There are great lessons for Ghana to learn from, you know, uh, post uh, Second World War Japan uh, industrial development. The Institute for Fiscal Studies, IFS, has declared its readiness to help government enact the tax exemptions bill. The bill, which is aimed at regulating exemptions granted investors and corporate institutions, has been laid uh, before Parliament by the Ministry of Finance for passage into law. According to the IFS, Ghana stands to benefit immensely from the bill if government is able to pass it. Now, economist and fellow at the IFS, Leslie Dwight Mensah, has been addressing the press. So it's important that measures such as this, as well as other revenue measures, uh, the impact of such measures are properly evaluated prior to their implementation. We think also that the government should move quickly to curtail exemptions in the tax regime, many of which are inefficient and costly. To this end, the passage of the exemptions bill is critical, and the IFS stands ready to provide inputs for the bill's refinement before enactment. As I pointed out, from the government's own estimates, the, the yield from passing that bill to deal with exemptions will be about 500 million, which is actually more than we're going to get from the uh, recently announced tax hikes. You know? So dealing with this is actually quite, quite critical. 
a rapidly growing expenditure on goods and services, as I showed you, which has come at the expense of lower capital spending, should be controlled. Now, let's remember that you know, capital spending is what leads to the development of infrastructure. You know, and you need infrastructure to improve productivity of the economy. Indeed, infrastructure spending underpins the long-term economic growth of the economy. You know. So the trend that we are seeing is, is quite worrying. And we've got more on the IFS post-budget review coming up on the marketplace in about 20 minutes. That's it for business for now. Back to you. Thanks, Daryl. And up next is sports.